550, Big 550 KTRS. Tonight at Hillman Hall on Washington University's campus at uh, 7 o'clock, free and open to the public, is a uh, the Black Anthology Organization. It's the oldest student cultural uh, organization on WashU's campus, is uh, bringing our next guest in for a speech. Bree Newsom, welcome to Big 550 KTRS. Oh, thank you for having me. You were there when the Confederate flag came down in South Carolina. What happened? Uh, well, actually, I climbed the, the pole um, and, and took the flag down first. I wasn't actually there when the state officially lowered the flag. Um, it was still a pretty, you know, contentious issue at that time. Um, and, I mean, apart from it not being particularly safe for me to be there, I, I also didn't want to distract um, from the, the act of the, the state finally lowering the flag. So I'm confused. Before, days before, weeks before, hours before, you climbed a flagpole and took the flag down? You had you had a helmet, you had your climbing gear, and you yes. took the flag down. Yes, that's correct, yes. Um, that was in June, and then uh, at the end of June, I think it was like June 27th was the actual date, and then the state officially lowered the flag either a few days or a week later. I'm not exactly sure how many days later it was, but it was it was shortly after that. Uh, pretty extraordinary that you were actually physically able to climb up a flagpole. That's that's a story in and of itself. Yeah, um, I actually had not had climbing experience, um, but, uh, I, you know, there was a group of activists that I was working with, and, you know, we decided that we thought it was really important to make the statement that, um, you know, it, this kind of hate has to stop now. Um, and so, you know, uh, we came together and there was an activist who was a Greenpeace activist, had done a lot of like environmentalist work um, and, you know, had some more experience with that. And she actually trained me, I had a, about a day and a half, and she trained me on, uh, on how to, you know, scale a pole. Um, so it was pretty, pretty amazing, yeah. You were arrested after that happened. But after that, you know, you became um, very popular in activism. President Obama even talked about the need to have to take down the flag, to remove the flag. Um, that took a lot of courage. It, it did, but you know, I, when I kind of like volunteered to, to do that and I was, um, you know, really praying on that decision and considering how dangerous it was, I mean, one of the things that I considered was the level of danger that people had to face in the past, you know, in order for us to have the rights and be where we are uh, today. You know, I thought about the Freedom Riders. I thought about John Lewis, these young people who got on buses, you know, going into the South in direct, you know, violation of segregation laws. And, you know, they, at some bus stations, they were met by the Klan. Uh, you know, they were attacked. They were beaten. You know, they were thrown in jail. They really didn't know whether or not they would make it back alive. I think about, uh, you know, how, how many people, you know, did lose their lives and sacrifice their lives um, in the, you know, cause of freedom and, and civil rights. And so... I just kind of felt, you know, in that moment um, that, you know, when, when that moment kind of presented itself and, and recognizing that this is kind of part of what has always gone into ensuring that we have rights or carrying the banner of freedom forward, I just I just felt a deep obligation to do that. Are you from South Carolina? Were you living in South Carolina at the time? I was living in Charlotte, North Carolina at the time, which is about an hour um, from Columbia, South Carolina. But the issue is deeply personal to me. Uh, my ancestors were enslaved in South Carolina. My fourth great grandparents were enslaved in Rembert, South Carolina. Um, <clears throat> my family is from South Carolina. I had a, a great uncle who was lynched. Uh, my grandmother witnessed the Ku Klux Klan drag her neighbor from his house and beat him um, in the street because he was a black physician. Um, so it was a you know, it, it, in addition to just the horror that came in, you know, the aftermath of the Charleston massacre, um, you know, where Dylan Roof uh, murdered nine parishioners as they were praying. Um, so, so in addition to that, you know, and, and just feeling like we wanted to send the message that we cannot allow this kind of racist terrorism to continue um, to terrorize us, um, it was also just a deeply personal issue because my family has been touched by that kind of terrorism as well. You, as you said, went up, uh, shimmied, up shimmied up the flagpole and took it down, but also the state of South Carolina voted to actually take it down. So that was extraordinary in and of itself. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I think that, you know, it, it, people especially who are, who are familiar with the history, I mean, this flag was raised in 1962 in response to the civil rights movement, which was going on at that time. And, you know, the South Carolina really is like the heartbeat of the Confederacy. South Carolina was the first state to secede from the Union. Um, you know, so, so for South Carolina to 
finally lower that flag after 54 years is, is pretty significant. It's a, it's a very significant step. What are you doing with this newfound attention that uh, you've received? Um, well, I've, I've been receiving a lot of invitations to speak. You know, just as you mentioned, I'm speaking today at Washington University. Um, day in and day out, I am a local organizer in North Carolina. Um, you know, I have you know, come to the realization that in order for us to have racial equality, there's going to have to be economic justice, which is going to require really lifting entire communities out of poverty. And so that's a lot of the, the work that I'm focused on, and so I'm kind of using this national platform that I have now to really kind of lift up um, the local work, because I think that's a model for what is going to need to happen in communities all around the nation. Uh, Bree Newsom is an activist, and a, uh, as well as a filmmaker. Uh, any films we can find uh, that you've done out there? Uh, I do actually have a short film I did, gosh, that was almost eight, eight years ago now, um, but it's online, it's called Wake. Uh, that was a short film that I did, uh, my senior film at, at NYU. All right, good. Yeah. Uh, Bree Newsom is going to be speaking tonight, Hillman Hall, 7 p.m. on the campus of Washington University, free and open to the public. Bree, thanks for checking in. Thank you. You got it. 757 KTRS. The St. Louis Metro, there are 96,000 people receiving some sort of in-home health care so they could live independently at home.